Ooh, I don't know, guys. I don't know how I feel about this one. <sighs> so here is the newest news. Let me read the title and then we discuss. DeepMind's Aeneas AI tool deciphers hidden patterns in ancient Roman texts. So, I really don't know what to say about this. I don't know what to think. On one hand, oh wow, someone found a way, of course, through AI to decipher hidden patterns in ancient Roman texts. That sounds fantastic. You know, even the possibility if this is real and it's legit, we're going to read through this entire article. But if this is legit and the AI can be used, particularly I imagine they're talking about advanced language models, if AI can be used to decipher stuff that we can't and maybe find out and uncover hidden secrets of our past. Then on one hand, that's exciting. It's phenomenal. On the other hand, it's AI. So AI is really, it really is a dangerous endeavor. I'm all for technological progress. With that being said, can we trust it? Can we trust the AI? Because this is the problem. I often use AI as a translating system and it's really good. That's in fact pretty much the only way I use language models. It's either for translation aid, or sometimes it's basically use it as a glorified thesaurus in the sense that I will, I have written a text, it's mine, it's a paragraph or one of my scripts, but I'm thinking, I don't know, I'm reusing the same, same freaking word 17 times in a row. Uh, let me see if AI can rewrite it for me. And then I have the AI rewrite it for me. And I like, okay, I like this part. I'm going to ditch this part, the other part and return back to how it was. So I use it for polishing scripts and it's pretty good at doing that. But whenever I try, and use AI to actually find direct information. So like, for instance, I have a question about ancient history and I type it inside an AI model, then I have to triple check it. Because many times when I do double check it, sometimes the information is good. And in fact, it's even well sourced. But other times, the, and in that case, it's good to use it because it's usually expressed in an easy to use way. And you can even tell it, rewrite this, but now in a more formal way or rewrite it in a way that it's easier to understand, it, use less difficult words. It's pretty good for script development. But then again, on the other hand, oftentimes I do double check and triple check the information. I'm like, okay, the AI is completely wrong, like factually wrong. And it's just pushing myths. And then there are also those scenarios in which the AI is pushing a political message. So it's twisting and bending the truth. And and I have already proved, uh, provided proof of this on my analysis of Gemini AI that I posted some time ago. So, as I say, you cannot rely on AI directly, copy paste it and read it as is, because you there is a very high likelihood, I still haven't been able to statistically determine how likely it is to make mistakes, but there is a chance that you will be spreading misinformation if you don't triple check it with experienced professionals on the field. So, can we trust this? Well, let's read it. Google DeepMind researchers have developed an artificial intelligence system that can decipher, restore, and provide new historical insights about ancient Roman inscriptions, according to, the stud to a study published today in Nature. The AI model, called Aeneas, analyzed one of Rome's most famous texts and uncovered subtle language patterns that had escaped human historians for centuries. So, already this first part, I love that they're working on Roman inscriptions specifically. I mean, if this works, you could apply it to Akkadian, Sumerian, specifically Akkadian, in fact, in the cuneiform writing system of Sumerian as well. Uh, there is a lot that we could do, or perhaps even interpret and decipher languages that we haven't been able to. Uh, for instance, we don't have a lot when it comes to Etruscan, so the little we have, or even Macedonian up to that extent, so the little we have, w maybe w we could use it to decipher ideograms, logograms, pictograms, that would be good as a tool. But what about these patterns? The system revealed that the Res Gestae Divi Augusti, Emperor's Augustus' autobiographical inscription once displayed on bronze pillars in Rome, contains previously unrecognized parallels with Roman legal documents and reflects, open quotes, imperial political discourse, close quotes, focused on maintaining power. Okay, but then why aren't the historians... I mean, I could have told you this. Everything Emperor Augustus was doing had to do with propaganda. Just like a lot of the stuff the senatorial class writes is anti-imperial propaganda. Well, I guess maybe they could have guessed that, but they didn't actually find the specific parallels with, the Ro with Roman law, so maybe that's what they mean. Also, I see a very high number of M-dashes here, 
And I'm starting to think that the article was also written using AI as it's not that there is anything wrong with using the M dash. I think it's very nice to use it and it's very nice to use it when you know how to use it and a lot of people don't. Uh, with that being said, if you, you see it all the time, it can be a hint that the article or the paragraph has been written by AI because the AI language models freaking love the M dashes. I don't know what it is. <laughs> And another thing they do, it's not just this, it's also that. We'll see if we see that kind of paragraph, then I'm going to start building a case here. And here he is, Augustus of Prima Porta. I freaking love this. Do remember that the arm is not original, it's the third, and the original was holding a spear, business end to the ground. I like repeating that one. Aeneas builds on DeepMind's earlier Ithaca systems. Hey, I'll tell you this much, the names are great. In Greek, this would be Ithaki which focused on Greek inscriptions, but extends the technology to Latin text across the Roman Empire. The system uses a generative neural network to search for parallels within a database of over 176,000 Latin inscriptions. Oh yeah, I can see the AI exceeding at that. How much time and how many humans would that take, including possibility for human error? Once again, machine error is also a thing, but it just functions differently. Human error has to do with being tired and being affected by your own world around you, pressure and stress and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, no, of course, 176,000, the, the workforce would be monumental to have to deal with this and it's probably not a high priority thing. And so in this case, it's good to use the tool. All right, Latin inscriptions, helping historians, open quotes, interpret, attribute and restore fragmentary Latin texts, close quotes, through combined textual and visual analysis. All right. When tested on the Res Gestae inscription, Aeneas identified two probable date ranges between 10 BC and 1 BC, and between AD 10 and AD 20. I think that's already what we were thinking about the Res Gestae, right? Reflecting scholarly disagreements about when the text was composed. Open quotes, the way that it was it has modeled this scholarly debate was really an exciting result for us, close quotes, said study co-author Thea summer shield a historian at the university of nottingham all right widespread expert approval all right let's see if you're enjoying this video so far please take a moment to check out my patreon page with as little as a five dollar support you can help us ensure that we can continue to produce high quality and high researched content and at the same time you get access to polls extra videos unlisted streams and much more thank you so much more than 90% of historians who tested Aeneas found it helpful for determining the age and location of inscriptions. All right, so we started to get into the meat and bones of this. So not only uh, as the, of course, the title wanted to sort of put in the forefront the most impressive thing, finding and high, uh, hidden secret messages and possible combinational parallelism uh, through textual parallelism and possibly hexegesis, I would imagine, uh, if we are using biblical script which at this point you could but of course there is also the possibility of using it in order to date things that's interesting the way i imagine that would work would be because of vocabulary usage and spelling instances uh, let's see if they explain the system made epigraphers specialists who study ancient inscriptions both more accurate and faster at their work yeah so, open quotes, this is not just a successful case study, this is a new way of modeling historical uncertainty, transforming the way we study history, said co-author Yanis Asael, a computer scientist at Google DeepMind. Right, but he's a Google DeepMind, of course he's going to push it. I want to hear unbiased sources, not people that have something to gain. This is, of course, a source that even though I'm, yeah, I'm glad that he can share his opinion, it's clearly a matter of a conflict of interest, if you will. Professor, could you imagine a, a, a scientist, a computer scientist, a Google DeepMind saying, oh, this is just rubbish. It doesn't work, guys. You're just wasting your time. <laughs> Professor Alison Cooley from the University of Warwick, who helped evaluate the system, noted that Aeneas, open quotes, picked up on clues on, of spelling and vocabulary, as well as the linguistic nuances indicating subtle political ideology, close quotes. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Spelling and vocabulary usages, absolutely. That, 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 those would be the contextual cues that I would look for. But the problem is you give me 170, what? 176,000 to do. Uh, yeah, at, at that point, give it to the machine. But then humans have to reevaluate the, the work, right? Building on previous breakthroughs. Aeneas represents a significant evolution in DeepMind's AI systems for historical analysis, expanding upon their earlier work with Ithaca for Greek inscriptions. 
The system's advanced capability make it remarkably versatile for historians working with damaged or, yeah, or contextless ancient materials. Absolutely. I was thinking about that, actually. A lot of the stuff we have is damaged. Like, think about something like the Rosetta Stone, which was in phenomenal conditions, but one of the three sections was, in fact, missing some, sec some uh, material, which kind of, they still managed, of course, uh, Sir Champollion, in fact, still managed, but... Um, when you are missing, when it's fragmentary, and oftentimes it is the case, unfortunately, then this would be great. If you're like only having the first few letters, then an AI system could give you so many, it could run a lot of tests in the background very quickly and then tell you these 10 are the most probable and all, not only looking at the letters in that specific context within that phrase, but also compared to maybe usage. If it's a, imagine if the sentence that they're using is a proverb, then the AI system can find it and relocate it very quickly uh, if it has 176,000 things to, ch to check, right? And then at the same time, uh, this would work really well because what they can do once again is to, to see if it's a, some fo form of artistic license or rhetorical device that maybe could have slipped the mind of something you may not remember uh, because perhaps it could be either geographically disconnected or there could be a temporal disconnection, but still like something that could be recognized. So that's fantastic. Unlike, unlike previous tools, Aeneas can process multimodal inputs by analyzing both textual content and visual information from inscription images. Yeah, determine geographical provenance and most impressively, restore gaps in texts where the missing length is unknown. Yeah, this, this I'll have to say, it is impressive. And I can see a lot of possible applications, both in the field of archaeology, history, historiography, and linguistics, and in fact, developmental linguistics. The technology has been meticulously developed through collaboration between Google DeepMind and researchers from the University of Nottingham, Warwick, Oxford, and Athens University of Economics and Business. Prof really? Economics and Business? I wonder why. Professor Dame Mary Beard of Cambridge University described Aeneas as, open quotes, a really exciting and expert test run that promises to be transformative for a field that has traditionally relied on individual scholars' memory, judgment, and educated guesswork. The AI, well, it still is educated guesswork, is just that the form of education of a machine, when it has accessed such an enormous amount of works is monumental it's like exponential it still is guesswork the ai's ability to rapidly identify connections across thousands of inscriptions finding shared names phrases and formulas essentially transforms the painstaking work of piecing together historical puzzles into a significantly more efficient process and yeah i can agree with that so okay well if they use it this way then i would be in favor of it um but then again it still requires supervision human supervision in fact expert human supervision uh, like after the connections are made and then it tells you i connected these 11 works outside of these 170,000. i kind of cut it back to these 11 and i believe they're connected because of these reasons then you have to go and check the reasoning to see if it is, it's in fact analytically correct and the data uh, representation is is right or if there was something missing but of course the more complex and sophisticated these ai models become the less space for error there will be i would have to imagine anyways the way it was described i have to i have to say i'm in favor of it uh, but and i'm in fact looking forward to see what other forms of uh, undiscovered connections they may find and perhaps we might be able to remap some of those languages that we consider to be isolate, such as, for instance, Sumerian. Who knows? Maybe with this, th there is already some discussion on the idea of Sumerian having some form of connection with Dravidic languages, but maybe this could be applied to see if, if it's in indeed the case or if it was a matter of coincidence. Who knows? Uh, fantastic. Okay, so that's what I wanted to share. Let me know what you think. Do you think that this is a good tool and is indeed something that we could use for the benefit of research? Or do you think that the risks and innate risks that may come from the idea of using a machine and the possibility of humans relying too much on this sort of systems uh, outweighs the possible benefits within the academic and archaeological field and in fact linguistic sphere let me know in the comments and thank you very much for watching bye